Good morning, everybody. J-Man here with another breakfast cereal. And today we're talking about Flash Gordon. Oh my God. Okay. Uh. I love Flash Gordon. I have reprints of all of the comic strips by Alex Raymond. Even some of the later strips were still really cool. Uh, I love Defenders of the Earth. Great cartoon. I love the Flash Gordon cartoon. I have um, every Flash Gordon thing that you can buy officially, I believe. Um, there was a TV series, an older series that I don't have, and there may have been an animated thing that I don't have. I have the Filmation one, though. And I've got, obviously, the 1980 movie, which is in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And um, I have both 4K versions, the UK 4K version and the American 4K version. Uh, I obviously have the Blu-ray releases and all that stuff. I even have the Japanese poster, uh, which is a really nice poster. But we're not going to talk about any of that. We're going to talk about the 1936 uh, serial uh, Flash Gordon. It says Space Soldiers here. They renamed it uh, because there was a TV series. I That's the TV series I don't have. Um, oh, it does tell me right here. It's in, That was in 53, 54. I do not have that um, series, unfortunately. Uh, this is from 1936. Um, it's 13 chapters. And um, Buster Crab, of course, is Flash Gordon. Uh, Hans Zarkoff is Frank Shannon. Gene Rogers is Dale Arden. <laughs> We're going to talk about her. She's great. Uh, Charles Middleton is uh, um, Ming the Merciless, and he's great. Priscilla Lawson is Princess Ara. There's a whole bunch of people. Everybody's in it. Voltan, Baron, Thun. Thun is in this one. Thun didn't do anything. He kind of just got killed right away in the 1980s movie, which uh, was disappointing. Um, but yeah, I have so many notes on this uh, that I'm going to have to refer to them a lot because there's so much going on in this particular serial. Um, we're going to do uh, my space review for this one. So... Uh, Space reviews work on five uh, f five different uh, sections of a movie. So we've got the story, the pacing, the artistry, the characters, and the enjoyment. So um, the story is obvious. The story is the story. The pacing is obvious. The artistry would involve like special effects, uh, the look, costumes, music, all that good stuff. Uh, the characters is the characters, you know, do you like them? Are the bad guys bad? Do you know, you know, do you like the good guys? Uh, the enjoyment is where we have sort of a little bit of a play because movies, you know, um, because they're a form of art, there's some, you know, subjectivity there, right? Um, it's like, I might think a story's crap, but I still kind of like it anyways, just because. So every, every component gets a rating out of two, which will give you a final score out of 10. Uh, zero in any component would be garbage. One is like average, two is good. So this is a very good way to review uh, movies in general because some people might, you know, really hate the story, but they like the characters or they might really don't like, the, maybe the characters aren't very interesting, but you still like the storyline or whatever, right? So um, that that's, that's how I'm going to do these uh, serials. Okay. So let's get into the storyline. The storyline is a two out of two. Like, let's face the facts here, people. Uh, Flash Gordon's the damn best, okay? This is very good adaptation. Um, I don't remember every single comic strip, though I have all of the Alex Raymond ones reprinted. Um, and I don't remember who took over after Alex Raymond, but they <clears throat> there's at least two or three people who took over after that. Um, I think Jim Keefe. Uh, I'm terrible with names, which I always have to, I always have to take notes. Um, I think he took it over for quite a long time. I, I believe that that's, uh, he was in there and his stuff is pretty good, good too. Um, but yeah, storyline two out of two, we're talking like Flash Gordon. This is like predating all of the stuff that, you know, Star Wars and everything. And everybody knows it's a well-known friggin' documented fact that, you know, but, um, uh, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, these kind of guys, that's the inspiration for Star Wars. It's the inspiration for all sci-fi. If you look at the Alex Raymond, uh, strips, you're going to find that a lot of the costumes, like Dale Arden wears the Robin costume that Dick Grayson wears. I mean, Baron looks like like Green Arrow. The Hawkman is literally Hawkman. Like, we're talking like inspirational stuff here that's like literally shaped science fiction. Now, I'm not saying that, that Flash Gordon is super mega original and, you know, that's the be all and end all of science fiction. And if you don't like Flash Gordon, you're trash. I'm not saying that, but he's an important uh, character 
um, in all forms, comic strip wise, movie wise, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, Storyline's great. Flash. Uh, oh, so, so the planet of Mongo is coming towards Earth. It's a little bit different than the 80s movie. It's coming towards Earth. They don't know what the hell's going on. Zarkov uh, gets Dale and Flash um, to go into a rocket ship and go to Mongo and try to figure out what the hell is going on. Ming the Merciless rules. Um, we've got the Shark Men, the Hawk Men. We got uh, the Lion Men. Any kind of man thing you want is in, the, in the, is in this movie. This movie is out outrageously crazy good uh it there's so much going on um the story i mean there's like big giant god statues there is like spaceship battles okay there is underwater battles okay there's giant lizard creatures um there there's there's just there's monsters like suit guy guys in suits you know so like lots of crazy stuff um this serial also i was uh, i noticed that except for the final chapter um, there was no cheating. Um, now, this is a very famous thing in serials where they call it cheating. Um, well, I, I call it cheating. I don't know if they call it cheating. But um, where, you know, the, the example always given is from the movie Misery where, where Kathy Bates' character kind of makes fun of, of Rocket Man. You know, she's like, oh, Rocket Man goes, you know, off the cliff. So basically it's like there's like a car, the hero's in the car, and it goes off a cliff, and you see the car explode, and it says, come back next week for the next chapter. And then when you come back next week... They show that right before the car went off the cliff, he kind of jumped out. Now, that's cheating in the sense that you actually can't splice the end off of that chapter and the beginning off of the next and merge them together. See, because if you did that, it wouldn't actually be a cliffhanger because what you would have to do is you'd have to show the car drive and you'd have to show him jump out of the car, then the car go over the cliff. Now, that's still very exciting stuff, right? Like an Indiana Jones kind of stuff, right? That's still exciting. But the point of the cliffhanger was to say, holy crap, I think Rocket Man just died. What the hell's going to happen next week? That's where you're getting that sort of excitement and build up to the next chapter. This actually doesn't have that, but um, and it doesn't have it in the sense that like, Flash, where it ends is where the next one continues from. So Flash Gordon's in the grips of this monster and then, you know, cut back to next week and you're like, okay, you know, he actually is still in that grip of the monster and gets out from some way. There's a couple of small cheating moments, you know, one where they fall into this pit near the beginning and you're like, oh no, they fell into a pit. And then when they come back, they're falling in the pit and like a little net comes underneath them and catches them. So again, that's a slight cheat. Um... You could still splice that. My, my thing is that you could still splice the ending off, like they fall in the pit, and then it just continues on with him landing on a net. So you could still splice the beginnings, and you don't have to insert scenes within chapters that you just saw, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about cheating. Okay, uh, let's get into the pacing. Whoa, 13 chapters that went by like this. Uh, this is like super exciting. Uh, it's two out of two. You know where this review is heading, so this is, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, but, like, this is, like, super exciting. I am absolutely blown away at how exciting this actually was to me. I watched this, a um, little bit of a cheat. I watched it, some of it last night. Um, I started it last night and completed it this morning. So it's sort of a dinner cereal as well as a breakfast. <laughs> but, um, you know, I... I, I I could have almost watched the entire thing. I'm trying to keep the integrity of like actually having this with watching these with breakfast, but I just, I was just so, so excited to start. So I started a couple of chapters last night, but man, oh man, this was friggin' fast paced action, crazy, like sword fights, like shit, like ships, like the creatures, like there's just so many stuff, like Flash Gordon turns invisible. There, there's invisibility in this in the end. It's crazy. What else did I write down? Yeah, la big giant laboratories um what else what else is there uh there's just so much going on here yeah like the just just having all the crazy action the sword fights and everything is awesome so two out of two for that the artistry man this is two out of two guys this is 1936 there's some crazy cool shit going on in this freaking serial you guys gotta watch go watch these man i don't want to talk about flash gordon but you gotta watch this this is so cool okay uh like dude like i mean the effects are pretty good. They, there's parts where they, they they have like actual like lizards or actual like animals, real life animals interacting and they made the giant lizards and it's, they're, they're interacting with small people, but it's real actual animals. So it's not just like, it's not like stop motion or something like that. I love stop motion. Ray Harryhausen is one of my like heroes of, of all time. 
but I mean, it's really neat to see the the lizards were moving around. And 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 look, don't watch this and then come back and say, "Hey, Jay, man, you're nuts!" Like I could tell that was fake. Listen, don't give me this. I could tell it was fake, okay? Because I could tell Lord of the Rings is fake too. It, no matter your 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 mind can tell you if something's real or not. I'm talking about 1936, what they had at their disposal, killer stuff. The the models, the miniatures, the the Ming's like Fortress is Wicked. Um, I like all that. There's like dungeons, you know, like laboratories. There's a lot of cool stuff. The invisibility turns invisible. I mean, look, Invisible Man did that, and that's a great film. Um, so I mean, still really cool, uh, really cool stuff. Two out of two, man. I thought it was great characters. Two out of two. Come on, Buster Crab is the friggin' best, man. Buster Crab is like literally superhero personified like Buster Crab walking around is a superhero I don't think like I mean he doesn't have superpowers but he may as well because he's just the damn best in this movie every time he speaks you're like that is a damn hero every line of dot his hair like it's like his face like and he, wear, and he wears really outrageous costumes right the costume I should have talked about this in the art the costumes are great I love Flash Gordon's costumes they're out of this world they're really weird and fun um you can cosplay as anybody in any of these flash cord movies the 1980s movie took the costuming to a new level of like craziness um i i, I loved all that but yeah buster crab is the friggin best oh my god so good uh zarkov he's great look he's a scientist he's he's that oh science i'm done doing science uh so he's really fun voltan i mean uh voltan well that was brian blessed i think in um the 80s one he took inspiration right out of this guy. I don't remember the name of the actor who played him here, but he is a friggin' great. He's like, oh, ha, 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 big beard, and he laughs. He's this big, huge belly, and he's, like, very jolly. He's a great character. Uh, Baron is okay. Um, he's a little bit, he's a little bit on the, uh, you know, he's a bit stiff, uh, Prince Baron, but he's okay. Thun is cool. He's a big line guy. He's a big, big beefed up guy. Um, let's talk about uh, Dale Arden uh she's a little bit useless i'm still i'm maybe i'll give it one and maybe i'd give the characters one and a half maybe maybe one and a half just to just uh, mm, yeah i'll say maybe i'll say one and a half dale is super pretty like gene rogers is is very attractive very pretty but this is all she does is she's like no flash that's kind of all <laughs> it's kind of all she does um look it's 1936 man what do you want um, I definitely like Dale Arden in the 1980s movie because she's a little bit more feisty and she's a bit more like, you know, she's a bit tougher. Uh, this Dale Ar Arden, the prettiest of the prettiest in all of the land for sure. Uh, but she's pretty useless. Uh, I guess that's just her character. So it, it is what it, I don't know. I'm going to give the characters two out of two. Screw it, man. Dale Arden. I like, I liked her. I still liked her. Uh, Princess Aura. Oh my God. She is so good. She is so good in this movie. She's freaking on top of shit, okay? Like, anytime Flash gets saved by someone, it's her. She's running the show, man. Like, I don't know. I was shocked at how awesome she is. Uh, Priscilla Lawson, wow. What a damn awesome character. She's got to be like, she's my, my second favorite character in this. Number one is freaking Flash Gordon, of course. Number two is, 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 is I was going to say Priscilla, is Ara. Wow, she is freaking fantastic in this um let's talk about ming i like ming although blasphemy no i'm gonna go back to one and a half sorry i'm going back to one and a half uh, i know i'm flip-flopping but this is the kind of this is how it is like we're not we're you know this isn't a university class um okay i don't know i wish he could have been he was like very low-key sinister and i wanted him to be a little bit more nasty i think um it, it, it max von Sydow, who is who is like the the like the perfect ming um he was just very like big and and and, and charismatic and flamboyantly bad and like oh, oh oh we're going to kill you and pitiful humans and all that and and and, and maybe i was tainted by that um charles milton is is awesome still he's still really cool but uh, i would have liked to, for him to have been a little bit more out, outlandish i guess um, so I'm going to give a one and a half uh, on that. Uh, let's talk about just the enjoyment value. It's two out of two. So this is a nine and a half out of 10 guys, almost a perfect score for this serial. The characters, a couple of them just didn't live up. Like fun is okay. Baron is okay. Dale is pretty. So I'll give her that. Uh, otherwise she's okay. Uh, Ming was pretty good. 
Uh, but yeah, definitely the um, Zarkovs are all right too. I mean, Flash and Aura are like the stars of this for me, and Voltan. Though, though those three are like the super stars of this uh, serial. But I'm still giving it a two out of two for enjoyment. I absolutely loved this. Um, I, I I could easily redo this. This is a four hour sucker, four hours and forty five minutes, man. Pretty darn good. You. I know that they re-edit serials a lot of the times and they remove uh, chapters in order to make it like sort of like a, a like a like a 90 minute movie or a 100 minute movie. I don't know what they edited out. But I would definitely be interested to see what they've edited out in some of these movies. But I mean, really, you can get these. Uh, there's I, I actually have a three pack, uh, which is which includes Flash Gordon's Trip to Mars and Conquers the Universe. I, I, don't, I don't think it was very expensive to get these. They're very easy to acquire. Um, I definitely highly recommend Flash Gordon. It's absolutely fantastic. If you're into sci-fi and all that, this is like just super good. Um, and I've never seen these before. Uh, I bought these Flash Gordon things and I, I put them all in my little collection. With, like I've got my Swamp Thing collection. I got my Wonder Woman, you know, my aliens. So it's like... I, I always put these things in my little collections and then I kind of just don't even remember them or whatever. And then I was going back thinking, you know, I really should rewatch these. I saw uh, Conquers the Universe. Um, yeah, uh, I seen most of that, I think. Uh, but I never sat down and actually paid attention watching this one. So I'm really happy that I chose this uh, for this morning because it was really good. Um, okay, guys, we're going to end it off there. Let me know what your thoughts are on Flash Gordon in any form, um, especially the serial. Uh, are you a fan of it? What do you think? Do you think serials have a place? I'd love to do a new serial. I've seen a few cha uh, channels online on YouTube that uh, have done a couple of like newer serials and a very interesting take. I love this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's really a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, and you, you, if you're new to serials and you don't know what this is and you think all oh, black and white and cheesy, look, it, things may or may, this may or may not change your mind. But you got to put yourself in a position where you're you're that person in 1936 where you're like a you know 12 year old kid or whatever and you're going to sit down and watch this if if i was like 10 or 12 or what even like who, who am i kidding if i was 30 in 1936 sitting down to watch this i'd be like this is the greatest thing ever like literally if you're a kid you sat down in the theater and you watched chapter every week or whatever coming in every week to watch these you would literally, this would be like your favorite movie of all time. Like, I would have no doubt that if I'd seen this in its entirety as a kid, this would have been like my, my favorite movie. Because like the Flash Gordon 1980 is in my top 10 with Star Wars, right? So we're talking like high quality stuff here. It's great. P.S. Buster Crab is the friggin' man. Maybe one of the best like heroic figures in cinema, man. He's so good. Um... Yeah, he's great. All right, guys, that's it, and I'll see you next time.